I'd but, be curious. What did you watch when you came okay. home? Yeah, you come home. Well, I remember mm-hmm. in the afternoon they'd have uh, Captain Jack McCarthy. <laughs> oh, sure. <laughs> show Popeye cartoons. <laughs> Three bells and all as well. <laughs> when I was in elementary school, I would I was a few blocks from my house, so I would watch Captain Jack McCarthy show those. Uh, but then they changed it over to Bewitch, which I watched but didn't like it as much. Uh, I would watch both of those. I would watch uh, Popeye and then uh, Bewitch. I would watch that too. Did, did you want to fuck Elizabeth Montgomery? Um, I guess I did, but I was more of an I Dream a Genie. Uh, oh, person. yeah. That, I think, was like the first actual, like, wow, look at that. That's a woman, you know? And uh, Barbara Eden, I mean, still beautiful, you know? Oh, yeah. Uh, she must be a genie because she really is uh, holding up well, don't you think? Yeah, oh, yes. And and we, we spoke to ba- another Barbara, Barbara Felton. Oh, you did? Who also 99. looks great. Which yeah. I, by the way, think um, that is a underrated show, Get Smart. Get oh, Smart, absolutely. I, I love, love it. I yeah. love it. And um, what's his name? The guy who played Jaime? Dick Godier. Yes, we were, just we were talking, talking about. about getting him on the show if he's not dead. No, he's not <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's, a, he's, a, he's a celebrated artist. He's a painter. 99% of the guests on the show are dead. Yeah. That's fine. Oh, my career died yeah. here. <laughs> I'm, I assume my career is dead on the elevator ride up to your apartment. But I, Gilbert, I have to tell you, like that, uh, get smart. I think that was like a, ju- I mean, there were so many great jokes in there, you know? And uh, who was the lead guy again? What's his name? Uh, Don Adams. Now, Don Adams, uh, interesting thing in World War II, he was a, uh, you know, the Graves registration guys, the guys who, like, when the, uh, all the guys would die in the battle, he'd have to go over there and put the tag on the toe and all that kind of stuff. He did that. I, I believe that was his job in the military. Wow. And it supposedly affected him for the rest of his life. So I guess when they would say cut, he would go into this nightmarish flashback, you know, <laughs> start slapping around Jaime. And, uh, <laughs> that's, that's a great way yeah. to say masturbation. Yeah, whatever it slapping is. Slapping but... around Jaime. I, I was so pleased that, the Get Smart movie, which wasn't good. No. Which uh, one? The nude bomb? The, uh, no, the, no, the, no, the, no. The new the, Get Smart. The, oh, the, the, the Steve, Steve Carell. Steve Carell, Carell right, right. and uh, what's her name? Uh, yeah. uh, uh, Anne Hathaway. Yeah. yeah. And chemistry. What? Oh, yeah. The chemistry there. <laughs> but I was glad that they cast Patrick Warburton as Jaime. I don't know who that is. Because he was the guy who played Putty. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 guy from Rules of Engagement. When I first saw him, I said, that guy reminds me of Dick Godey. <laughs> <laughs> he had that same deadpan big guy style about him. So was that the show that like, uh, so now you're home, right? So that's like the, your afternoon show. Yeah, I, I, snack. I like Get Smart. I like Ronan and Martin's laughing. Mm. I didn't really get that show. I didn't see what it was. I, I, I know it was subversive and all that stuff. Yeah. I, I assume you would be more of a Smothers Brothers man. No? I, I did like the Smothers Brothers, although I kind of felt when they were getting too political. Yes. After a while, it was getting like, all right, you know, just right. just, just say mom always liked you best. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're sitting there holding your uh, Nixon in 74. Oh, uh, yeah. But uh, I have I, to ask you guys this because you guys know TV better than me. How does like uh, other other Smother Brothers? Smother Brothers are still alive. They right? sure. Oh are. yes. And that yes. was like two seasons, and then they were thrown off the air yeah. because of I'm, their. Subversive. I'm working with Tommy uh, next month. How did January. they? How did they get through the many years without money coming in? Did they tour? What did they do? That I don't know. Don't you want to know this, I, Gilbert? I we, want to know. We should have asked. We had David Steinberg on the show. He must be the him and Sid Caesar. I, I believe probably were the master of budgets. They must have ate like every other year. <laughs> this is the year I can't eat. And then I got eight bucks. You know, if we get Tommy on the show, that's a good question. I think yeah. they played clubs and they played Vegas. Yeah. For a while, they had an act. They must have, like, written for other people or something. I don't know. They must have done something. Yeah, uh, I'm sure they did a lot of live performing. And that wasn't today's TV money. You know, that wasn't, like, huge no. money. I don't even know what they... I guess they paid you in pot or something back <laughs> in, that, in that era. Tommy did a lot of guest spots, TV, did a little couple of movies... He's in a Bill Persky movie called oh. Serial. Oh. Martin Mull and Tuesday Weld. So he worked yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Tuesday Weld. Mm. Yeah, it's another nice. one. Nice. And then oh, David Steinberg fucked Tuesday Weld. He did? Yes. This is news to me. Yes. Wow. David Steinberg <laughs> fucked Tuesday Weld. Wow. And, and he said he one time met Orson Welles 
And he, you know, he's uh, of course thrilled to meet Orson Welles. Uh. And Orson, and they were talking, and Orson <laughs> Welles goes, uh, "So you were having sex with Tuesday Well?" And he knew this. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Can we yeah, open David's- the window to let some of your ancient <laughs> gossip out? <laughs> Any anything on Cleopatra? Cleopatra? Yeah, we got some dirt on her. Wow, we had David Steinberg on this show for an hour, and he never he, he buried yes. the lead. Yes, never mentioned it. Yeah, he's a class act. That's what we call it—a class act. <laughs> now, David Steinberg, like, where where did he come from? Like, he has to be like some kind of like a professor. Like, what, from what happened? Canada. Oh, yeah. Canadian. Canadian guy. Yeah. There you go. He came up. Uh, he came on the scene about the same time as Robert Klein. Oh, okay. As the college-educated Jews in yes. Germany. That, that's when it became like, you know, there are Jews and they're going to college. Yeah. <laughs> which brings up one of my favorite uh, movies, Goodbye Columbus. Oh, oh yeah. it's a great which, one. Which uh, Dick Benjamin. Yeah, we talked about getting him for the show, too. Yeah. yeah. Jack Lugman. Dick Benjamin, I believe, is the prototype Asperger guy. You know, he kind of like he's a low talker. He's nervous. He's no eye contact. He's that kind of guy. And he directed Gilbert in a movie. He did. No, no, he never. Oh, you didn't I, get I that didn't part. Get that. Part. Ah, I, I stand auditioned. I auditioned for a great haunted honeymoon. What was the movie? Uh, no, no, <laughs> that was Gene even, Wilder. Even better. I auditioned for and didn't get. Uh, my stepmother's an alien. Oh, I'm with sorry Dan Aykroyd. Yeah, yeah. Just... but with dodged. Mm. Yes. <laughs> That was a Spirit Award uh, performance. <laughs> so, what about you, Dave? Coming home from school, oh, yeah, that's not, a good question. What, Thank what, you. what did you? Uh, what were your passions? What didn't I watch? I was a fat, uh, uh, what's it called? A fat kid with asthma. So, TV was my best friend, and I would start watching like uh, you know, because I, I, I guess you could say I'm a generation behind Gilbert. So, we'd watch all the um, Scooby Doo's, of course, and uh, you know, then we'd work our way into, um, I guess you could say, the live action stuff, like the HR Puff and stuff. Mm-hmm. And then uh, as the evening rolled in, um, we would work our way through, uh, you know, one of my favorite shows, The Magician with Bill Bixby. Oh, wow. That's oh, a reference. Who, by the way, uh, you're talking about prostate. That's how he went down. You they, know? they say he was directing a Blossom right. in yeah. his last years. And uh, they say he would collapse to the floor right. in pain. And then after a while, they had him directing. They would bring out a couch. Wow. And he would lie down on the couch and direct the show because he was in such tremendous pain. You sure it wasn't just the show Blossom that did it? <laughs> I could never sit through a whole one. What, what, was her, what was her thing? She was a six, but she had the brain of a 12. Yeah. I, I, it. I, I never got that show. That might be small wonder yes. you're thinking of. Poor Bill Bixby. Small wonder. Oh, well, either way, yeah, Bill Bixby, that was a great show because he was a magician. Sure. And, uh, you know, he had the uh, um, African-American friend who was his, I guess, bodyguard, and uh, they would fly around on a plane, and he would use his magic to solve murders and crimes. Who was uh, his African-American friend? uh, He was a big, bald, black guy, really good guy. And, uh, you know, I... research team on uh, on Bill Bixby and the magician. Let's see, Flip Wilson had hair. Not Flip Wilson. (laughs) I was... Yeah, finally, I, I you guys are the perfect guys. Like I just read Flip Wilson's, uh, I guess, biography. Did you guys read that? No. Flip Wilson, by the way, who was I think my dad loved him, uh, was like uh, the first really crossover comic. He was of course like Cosby was, but then yeah. Flip Wilson really was like the guy yeah, who was like he had the top show in America, I believe, in the early seventies. Everybody yeah. watched his show. Yes. Yeah. And uh, Flip was, uh, you know, he was really a trip. That guy. He really. Uh, you know, all the characters. And I know you love characters. Yeah. You do. And uh, he also would do the uh, dressing up as a woman, which uh, I, I, I that that doesn't seem to play the way it used to, the dressing up as a woman. Every single black comic yes. now seems to dress up as a big, bla- <laughs> fat black woman. Uh, I think you're only thinking of Tyler Perry. Well, no, they're Eddie Murphy. <laughs> uh-huh. Martin and, Lawrence. And Martin Lawrence. Right. Yeah. Just not to interrupt, but the actor is Julian Christopher. Is he alive? I don't know. Oh, let's get him. (laughs) (laughs) 
Well, uh, I have a lot of other great shows that I would watch. And then there's like the shows from my, I guess, teens that really had an impression on me, like Magnum P.I. That's Tom Selleck. This is oh, before yeah. Blue Bloods and his other many shows, his Friends appearance. He really, uh, that show was really kind of like a, you know, before like a, before there was porn, there was that show. I would just watch it and it, was, it would get me like aroused. Okay, here's something. You I never know. watched that show though. Uh, you probably were in the much. clubs by that point. Yeah, I, I, I remember uh, years ago, they would refer to Charlie's Angels they would write about it and talk about it like this was porn. Jiggle oh TV, God. they yes. used to call it. Yes. And I watched that even as a horny kid. I watched it and goes, where's the sexy part of this? Yes. Show? Do you remember Network Battle of the Stars where they oh. would get all the, like, Carol Wayne yeah. and yes. all the buxom. Carol yeah, those, Wayne. And those were good. Angelian, and they'd get oh, them all. Donna, and Dixon, they, all Donna the Dixon, all of them. Mm. The Solid Gold Dancers, that was porn. That was a different, yeah, no, I don't think I was ready for that yet. But, uh, you know, in the pre-interview, we talked about, like, Star Trek and things like that. And uh, I, I assume that, you know, you're not really a nerd, are you? You're not into... No, I'm about. a really cool guy. You're a cool guy. <laughs> a tastemaker, as they I'm call totally it. I'm totally hip. <laughs> but Star Trek was never your thing. Never got into Star Trek. And how about Star Wars? Were you into that? I hated Star Wars. You hated it? Hated Star Interesting. Wars. Did I didn't you know walk that about out you. In, yeah. in, a, in, a, in like a No, disgust? I watched the whole thing, but I, oh. I remember at the end I went, I don't get it. No. Mm. I don't get it. Well, we are all Planet of the Apes fans. Oh, there you go. Yes. So Did you like the Three Stooges? I love the Three You know Stooges. what? I have to tell you that I didn't really like it. I had three brothers. Wow. I had two brothers, so it was a little too close to home. And we did, you know, that was back when people would beat each other up, so we really were, like, fighting each other all the oh, time. Oh, so, so it was and, too you know, autobiographical. It was too autobiographical, yeah. and I never got the whole idea of why Why are they, um, what, like, what's their origin story? Like, why are they, <laughs> are they orphans? <laughs> Like, where are they going? Are they, like, searching for parents? <laughs> what is origin doing? story? <laughs> yeah, and where are they? Oh, they're, like, in some, what town are they? They're in some weird town. It's like a, you, it's not a coastal town. You know what got you know, me like years ago? Kansas City or something. With movies and TV shows like Abbott and Costello's that TV I watched. show. That I Is that the idea of men who were partners. Yeah. And they were totally straight. Yeah. Right. But Sh they, sharing an apartment. Yes. Yeah. yeah, they lived together. They slept together right. like the students. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and they would call themselves partners, but there was nothing gay about that. Nothing at all. <laughs> they were like down on their luck. It's yeah. like the depression or something. Yes. <laughs> Nobody can afford gay. Like they, didn't even, they wish they could afford gay. There was no gay back then. Yeah. They was just hungry and eating. Yeah. <laughs> I think Bud and Lou may have shared a bed on yes, the old Abbott and yes, Costello absolutely. show. And, and the Stooges were yeah. always. Yeah, and like, Laurel and Hardy, too. Oh, yes. Who would you watch? Would you, I think the Stooges is kind of like porn. You really only watch it alone. You don't invite friends over. Like, <laughs> let's watch some Stooges. <laughs> Do you? Uh, I it, If they're into the Stooges. Okay. Yeah. Or while we're talking about obscure TV, Dave, our mutual friend Dave Juskow yeah. insisted that I ask you about a show called Arc 2. Well, this has got to be out of you guys. Like, I'm sorry. Th this is no way that you guys watch this show. This is the geekiest show out there. There's a thing called Saturday morning TV. This is before the, uh, you know, where you could, like, decide to watch whatever you want on Saturday yeah. morning. You had to watch whatever they put up there. And they had the show. It was about a post-apocalyptic world where these people, it was a blonde Norwegian-looking ABBA-type dude, uh, a beautiful Asian woman, and a chimp that talked. And they're all dressed up as dentists. <laughs> and they travel around... In this post-apocalyptic world, they have weapons, but none of them hurt anybody, and they just solve. I, it's all about the environment and stuff like that. It was like a '70s kind of show. Did their weapons have that TV laser gun sound of? No, hmm? they had like a bright light. Yeah. I remember that was the thing to scare off like the um, you know the uh, mutants. <laughs> and then there, there was a lot. Of, I'm glad Dave brought that up because that's yeah. like one of our connection. That's a really good show for us. We both enjoyed that. And show. who was on it? I don't know. I told no, you the biggest blonde fifteen guy. episodes. Helen Hunt did a guest spot on it. We looked oh, it up really? before you got here. But let's Helen Hunt. What won't you do? You know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah. Whether it's Arc Two or uh, <laughs> the, the show with what's it? Paul Reiser. You know him, right? Uh, yes, Helen Hunt. Though uh, she did this movie. Uh, uh, what was it? Something dance. A uh, water dance. Water dance. Yeah, with Eric Stoltz. And and, and for me. he's crippled. <laughs> 
he's working for his Academy Award by being a cripple in a movie. But yes. she has sex with him, and she had a great body back in the day. She did. Yeah. yeah. Full, fully loaded, as we say. Yes. <laughs> she has a couple of people like that that, uh, you know, you just look at them and you're like, wow, oh, not bad, you know? Like, um, who is the... Uh, I also like the actresses that like are, like, hiddenly... They're Jewish, you know what I'm saying? But yes. they're not, they never play a Jewish part. Oh, yeah. Well, Helen like t- Hunt. Helen, is she Jewish? She's a Jew. No yeah. way. Uh, what about Melanie Griffin? No way. Melanie Griffin? No, 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 no. What about... Uh, sh- uh, let's go through the... In uh, fact, Melanie Griffin... Mm-hmm. Uh, she did that World War II movie with uh, Michael Douglas. Shining Through? Maybe? Something like that. Yeah. yeah. Well, she's Tippi Hedren's daughter, so she yeah. couldn't possibly be Jewish. Tippi and, Hedren. And, yeah. and so they, they asked her <laughs> to show how bright Melanie Griffith is. They said, she, well, they asked her what she learned studying up for that move, that World War II movie. And she said, I didn't know they killed six million Jews. Really? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Definitely not Jewish. <laughs> wow. That's her tsunami joke. Yes, right yes. Right there. <laughs> and then she she covered up for it by saying, I thought it was just a few thousand. <laughs> <laughs> you know how they exaggerate? Yeah. <laughs> she did the little quotes in the air. You know them. They're emotional. You could see her PR people going, no, shut up, don't, shut up. Don't. <laughs> Should, should we cross Melanie Griffith off the invite list? Uh, yes, I guess so. She, now, no, I don't think she's the right cut for this show. Oh, secretly no. sexy. Well, yeah. Barbara Feldon. Bar- she's yeah. Jewish, of course. No, no she no, wasn't no. a Jew at all. Oh, what about Barbara Eden? Was she Jewish? No, nope. no, no, no. I figured with that Jewish name, Eden. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's somewhere in the Braun family. <laughs> Who are some other sexy... <laughs> Uh, I'm trying to think of the woman. She's she always looks like she's from the Ozarks, but she's uh, she's beautiful cheekbones, dark. What was she in? She was in the movie where like um, the haunted house was having sex with her all the time. I believe it's called the Changeling or something. Oh, uh, 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 mm, the haunted house was having sex with her. Oh, sorry, the Changeling is the one with George C. Scott and the the haunted wheelchair. Oh no! Oh, okay. by the way, I love George C. Scott. <clears throat> yeah, Day of the yes. Dolphin was a too. big movie for me. Yeah. Oh, oh, I remember that yes. one. Yeah. Fa, love, be, not. You know, that whole thing they were doing there. I believe that's coding. I don't know what they're actually talking and, about. And George C. Scott was also in... Uh, hardcore. Yeah, hardcore. Oh, there hardcore. you go. That's there my daughter. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Which was basically The Searchers. Yes. It was oh. basically John Ford's The Searchers wow. uh, uh, re, re, uh, put into the world of porn. Yes. So that was old. That was in San Francisco, right? That was like old San Francisco. Yeah. You ever worked there in the 70s or anything like that? Maybe. No. No? Mm. But, oh, and George C. Scott also did... Uh, Patton. Yeah, Patton. That was a great one. You know, Patton was a Jew hater. Oh, uh, what? Yes. I heard he had a little mousy voice and that uh, George C. Scott said, I'm not going to play him like that. Yeah. I'm going to play him. But, but yeah, I've heard that. Yeah, heard, and heard there's that. recordings of him going... I hate the Jews. <laughs> <laughs> really? I'm I'm going to fight Hitler, but I hate the Jews. Yes. And uh, George C. Scott decided not to play it like that. He played him as a Jew liking. <laughs> <laughs> that was the original working title. Barbara Hershey. Barbara Hershey. Oh, Barbara oh, Hershey. Barbara Jewish, right? She was Barbara Siegel first. Yes. So then she Whoa. Was, she, Siegel. No, she became... Barbara oh, she Se- became Barbara because Seagull. Because she saw That's right. a dead seagull You are correct. On the no beach. way. You are and, correct. And, and believed that the soul of the seagull wow. entered her body. No, so you're she, making this up. No, no, I wish. Really? Google it, people. Yeah. <laughs> she was originally Barbara Hershey. She saw a dead seagull, believed that that seagull's soul uh-huh. entered her body, and then changed the name to Barbara Seagull. Wow. So how did George Seagull... Pick, pick his name. <laughs> just, he, just he, was, he was playing the banjo. We all know that. Yeah. He was playing some low end bluegrass. Yes. <laughs> some my accountant knows how to play the banjo bluegrass. I like George uh, George yeah. Siegel movie that I like is Bye Bye Braverman. It's a good one. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. Like one of his oh. first ones. Yeah, yeah. he's got um, uh, 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 what's his. Uh, uh, what's his name? Book Sorrel Book. Oh, Sorrel Book from the Dukes of Hazard. Yes, right. Uh, Joseph Wiseman and Jack Warden. 
That's a wow. good one. Yeah. Is that Paul Mazursky movie? No. Uh, oh, Sydney Lumet. Sydney Lumet. Sydney Lumet. Yeah. You're right. You're right. And Alan King is in it. Now, I... I, I and Godfrey it Cambridge. Year, it took me years to figure out that Alan King was a movie actor. Like, I never thought of him as oh, a movie actor. Oh, a lot actor. of movies. Yeah. 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 He's in that movie with Ali McGraw that's, that Sidney Lumet made. Really? Just, just tell me what you want. Oh, yes. And, well, and Henry directed him in that Memories of Me with Billy Crystal. Wow. Oh, and, 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 and he was in um, Casino with yeah. Robert De Niro. Yeah, that I know. Yeah. That I know. Now, speaking of movies, Dave. Go ahead. You've been in a few movies. Oh, okay. But I've heard you say that you don't think of yourself, you don't think you're much of an actor. Oh, I'm a horrible actor. I really, I really don't get it. I have no idea what's going on there, and I don't even know why people want to do it. I understand that like uh, people want to be famous, and that like if you're the top like 15 actors in the world, you make a lot of money, and you know it's amazing and all that kind of stuff. But I have no idea what, what people get out of it. I don't. I. It's so unlike stand up. But you were in, of course, the classic Pootie Tang, which Gilbert and I were yes. discussing before. <laughs> Gilbert, I can't believe you weren't in that movie. It's kind of like a comics, comics movie. Oh, yes. I guess they didn't see me as a comic. That was Louis, uh, I like to call it Boy Louis, when he was a really young guy, because he's always younger than me. But he must have been, like, I don't know, like 30, if that. And he directed a movie, and I remember them, um, he was getting a lot of trouble from the studio, and they, they wanted to take the movie away from him or something like that. But it was amazing how confident he was in directing this movie. And let's face it, it's not the greatest movie, but there's some great moments in that movie. Well, for people who haven't seen it, it's a, it's a parody of black exploitation uh, yes. movies of the 70s. Right. And now they would consider that a hate crime. Yeah, but, yes. Uh, <laughs> if you see the movie, make sure to turn your way away from it. <laughs> what, what part did you play? <laughs> I played the underling of the um, of the evil white guy who was uh, trying to um, destroy Pootie Tang, and that guy was also he was in um, he was a seventies actor, the man from Uncle, the man Robert from Uncle, Vaughn. Robert Vaughn. Oh, right, right, yes, and that was cool, and he was a really cool dude. And I remember asking him something on the set, and I'm not a big uh, you know like whatever. I asked him like you know like uh, you know some kind of acting thing. I, I didn't know what to ask him or something like that. And he was like, uh, you just show up, you know, something like one of those, like, you know, like, you know, I'm a good actor, so I really don't care. And uh, <laughs> then I realized, I said, like, you know what? I'm going to take it a step further. I'm not going to show up. Yeah. All right? I don't care about this. So. Robert, Robert Vaughn. <laughs> Robert Vaughn also starred in Teenage Caveman. Correct. Yes. And he's wow. in The Magnificent Seven. Oh, that's yes. right. That's a great. Yes. Yeah. That had a big influence on me, too. Yeah. Okay. Here's my problem with The Magnificent Seven. Go ahead. <laughs> it starts out as the coolest picture ever. Yeah. I mean, all those guys are at their coolest. Yul Brenner. Toughest, yeah, and Bronson. Charles Bronson. Yeah. Oh, yeah, my and, favorite. Oh, yeah. And then I don't understand the middle section where the Mexicans win. Yeah. They take away all their guns from the uh, Magnificent oh, the Seven. Seven. Yeah. And, and for some reason, they decide not, not only not to kill them, but to give them their weapons back. Oh, the banditos you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. The and bad that, Mexicans. That's when the movie lost me. I, d I have like a love-hate with that movie because I did watch it with my gardener. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> he seemed to tune out. <laughs> he liked the middle, did not like the beginning nor the end. No, I love that movie. That was like uh, that, the Wild Bunch, that whole like kind of like oh, border yeah. Mexico sure. kind of cool. Oh, uh, yeah. I love that time. Like they're all like uh, they're like – once again, they're like renegade guys, much like the Three Stooges. They, they're like, <laughs> in, they're it's like, been compared. yeah, they're like ex-military guys or something, and they're down in Mexico. It's like their last chance. Well, like the you know? Dirty Dozen, the yeah. Dirty Dozen, yeah. another great Kelly's one. Heroes is another uh, one. Oh, Kelly yeah. Zavallis, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Do you like him better as a TV star on um, Kojak, or do you like him as a movie guy? Because as a movie guy, he really rocks with the. Oh yeah. Stuff, you know, I yeah. like him as the guy being stalked by the killer doll in that Twilight. Uh, uh, oh, that oh, was great. Talking, right. talking Tina. That's right. That's another show that really was. Uh, and the Twilight and Zone he episode. was a Russian guy, and I don't know if it was called like. Horror Train. Oh, oh, the Horror Express. Horror Express. Sure, a uh, hammer yeah. film. It was I think. written by my my old film school professor. Oh, I'd like to geez. mention him <laughs> since you brought it up. <laughs> yes, but that was the time in in I guess show business where like only like five ugly guys were allowed. In. Oh, you know, now it's like a it's a fug off out there. I'm like I'm I'm not even that bad looking now compared to some of the uglies. <laughs> do you, do you oh do you know who Telly Savalas's niece is? No. 
Jennifer Aniston. No way. Oh, I did know that. Yeah. Yes. Talk wow. about, I guess, ugly skips a generation. Yeah, really. <laughs> She's Greek. She yeah. is a Greek. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so they're related, believe it or mm. not. Because she's don't... actually bald. She uh, is. Really... <laughs> wow. And sucks on lollipops during the day. <laughs> so let me ask you, since you guys yes. are the experts. Okay. Yes. Now, Zero Mostel, uh, who yes. was in, yes. uh, you know, a mad, 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 mad world. No, he wasn't in that. No, he's in the producers. Uh, he was in the producers. Yes. Which is probably one of the greatest movies ever made. Uh, yes. Yeah. Amazing. So did you guys see that in a theater or did you see that on TV? I or... saw it on TV. Oh, you did? I, yeah, that was a great movie. I yeah. would love to have seen that movie in uh, a theater. Like, that's one uh, oh, of the few. Because yeah. I don't go to movies <sighs> now. I, me and Jessica, we've been, we both do not like to go. We like to watch it at home in our own sad worlds. We don't like to go to movies. Well, like there are certain getting back to like Charles Bronson. Go ahead. I saw Death Wish yeah. when it first came out. In a movie here in Manhattan? Yes. Uh, no, in a movie in Brooklyn. Oh. And and New York was a shitty place it was. back then. Yeah. 75 and, or 74, I yes. think. Yeah, that movie. And I, and I felt like you can't get the impact now. What Death Wish meant back then. Yeah. Like the audience would go out of their minds when he'd shoot down a mugger. They loved it. Yeah. They would go nuts in really? the theater. They were screaming and applauding and wow. cheering. <laughs> so, um, you know, I would say that, uh, you know, you invited me in to talk about a lot of things, and I'd have to say that we should probably give the Planet of the Apes. You yes. Know, it's time. So how old were you when you first experienced the, uh, you know, I, P-O, I, POA? I, I, I saw it. I went with my father. You did? <laughs> wow. You never told me this. I, I was very small. I went with my father, mm-hmm. and, and I loved the first one. First one was shocking. Yeah. Shocked me. Yeah. That, that yeah. I, I loved the first one. After that, I felt like I had totally lost interest in all those sequels. What are you talking about? Well, here's my favorite thing of Planet of the Apes, is they tried to get political yeah. and put a civil rights message in it, and, but they would have the apes as servants. So right. as, as to protect... To say something good and protect black people, yeah. we're comparing them to apes right. in these movies. I saw that. I saw that a bit. And I thought... Mostly in the hairstyles and the clothes. <laughs> that's that's in right from the beginning, though. I mean, that's in the novel. Yes. That it's a, that it's, yeah. It's a, that, yeah, I mean, it's, it's there right from the first film. But I thought they're making a civil rights message, but they are saying that black people are apes, according to well, this book. Well... I, I kind of look past that for just the amazing uh, coolness of the actual movie, and um, and you like the sequels. You don't. You know. I love know Beneath the Planet of the Apes. With James Franciscus. Yes, yes. James Franciscus. Return of the Planet. Uh, Return to the Planet. Of the, I like all of them. And then I even watched the Ape TV show that was on. Oh, oh God! God. That went on for a long time. Oh my God! That probably jumped the shark. A oh, and bit. I remember Claude Aikens. Yes, was yeah. one of the apes. And How did they get him? You think? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he, he was a big star at that point, no? Yeah, Claude Akins was great. Ricardo Montalban's in the third one. Oh, yes. He was yeah. excellent. Right. I think Paul Williams. He's one no of the apes. No way. Yes, he is. Yeah. Yes, I believe yes, he's he one of the uh, orangutans. The, yeah. Uh, yeah. The learned ape. It may be in the third one. Or the, by the Battle of the Planet of the Apes, which That's was the fifth one, movie. I was gone. Uh, well, I saw, it, it with was, all those sequels, when they start going, well, this is back in time, but in the future back in time, and, and there's been a mishap. And we went backwards on the planet. And you don't like any of that. Yeah, it, it, after it's all, it gets a little confusing. I like it. Like, here's another movie. We're talking about Charlton Heston, who was a huge, great, um, you know, I didn't see the new um, Moses movie, but I assume. He showed his ass. He did. Yeah, he did. With That's Nova, right. that girl, yes. another girl, super That's hot. Oh, not a Jew. She, I, I, I assume she's not a Jew. Yeah, she was totally hot. Ooh, she was girl. either married or she was the girlfriend of, of one of the studio executives. Oh, that That's makes sense. That's why she was in that film. But um, Omega Man, which is another really great important one. movie. Oh, my, with the uh, zombies. Yeah. It. There was like a before zombie. But it also had like a cult thing to it, the pandemic. You know, it had to touch on a lot of today's issues. Uh, there is a uh, interracial uh, coupling of Charlton and this uh, like super hot uh, African-American woman with an afro, like 70s style. 
And, uh, <clears throat> you know, I just have to say that I know he's known as like this kind of right wing, you know, gun guy. But um, that movie was awesome. I loved it. Well, he, loved marched, it. he marched for civil rights, Charlton Heston. Did he? Yeah, he did. Mm. And, and yeah. it's, it was kind of unfair when, like, Michael Moore ambushed him. Sure. And it, because he wasn't a racist. He's not a racist. Yeah. He was He's a gun. A nut. He was a gun nut. Oh yeah, he's a gun yeah, racist. He liked guns, yeah. but yeah. who doesn't? Yeah. yeah. But uh, you know, <laughs> but you're thing, packing now, aren't yeah, you? Yeah. I don't. Yeah. I can't see why you wouldn't. I'm I mean, talking to to Dave right now, and I want to shoot him. I don't blame so. you. <laughs> but wait, hold on. There's something about the uh, you know movies are remade for our times. Like uh, the Omega Man was remade with, uh, I believe. Uh, Denzel, no, who, who was? Oh, well, Will Smith. Will yeah, Smith. Right, right. right. Now, why, why did it have to be Will Smith? And I'm not saying he's not bad, but that remake was not that good. No. I mean, there was that dog in it with the butterfly. That was interesting, but, you know, it's cute. And then, but wasn't it, was the Omega Man also, wasn't that also the Vincent Price? That was, yes. That was called, I think there was another one with last Vincent Price called The Earth. Last Man on Earth. Yeah, yes. that's the original, the- original of it. And uh, Last Man on Earth, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, um, he, he, there's I, no bad Vincent Price as far yeah, as Gilbert's yeah. concerned. I, I love, I love the Tingler. What's that? Yeah, just that's thought. Not, it's this <laughs> really cheap horror film. Oh, and the Tingler is this like rubber. It looks like a rubber centipede. It's the worst. <laughs> and, and and it's believed through real uh, advanced science that when someone is scared, a Tingler lives on their spine. Mm-hmm. And will crush them and kill them unless they scream. And there's one part of the movie where a tingler gets loose in a movie theater. Oh wow! And 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 William Castle, who produced it, had buzzers That's in right. the seats, so he'd buzz people. And so it was a double thing, like because he gets loose in a the theater, and Vincent Price goes in the movie. The tingler is loose in the theater. <laughs> scream, scream for your life. The tingler, it scream, scream for your life. And everyone would scream. And then my favorite part, after the tingler <laughs> gets loose in the theater and he's yelling for them to scream, uh, they capture the tingler. And, and Vincent Price says in the movie, who, which also takes place in a movie theater. <laughs> the Tingler has been captured. The movie will resume shortly. <laughs> <laughs> and the Tingler is the worst looking prop oh, in the history. It's of, so obviously pulled yeah, on a string. Just awful. And I have a great affection for William Castle, but I, that movie, you can, you can barely get through it. it it's like grade Z. <laughs> I don't the know. The Tingler. I was half listening. Now, the Tingler, it's not like a Danny Thomas thing, it's not some weird sex. <laughs> I'm going to pull a tingler on her. <laughs> the tingler is loose in my asshole. Oh, oh scream, scream. <laughs> let's talk a little bit about stand-up, Dave. First of all, I'd be curious, how did you and Gilbert... No, let's just talk about the tingler. <laughs> how did you guys meet? Do you remember meeting? I, I think, I, you know, as a young boy comic, I, I probably ran into Gilbert a couple of times. Probably a Catch a Rising Star, the old Catch a Rising Star. But, um, you know, stand-up-wise, uh, you know, he is an icon. He is a legend. And, uh, you know, what I love about Gilbert is, um, you know, he does not retreat. You know, I, I consider myself, um, you know, I, I've, I've, uh, I've, I've done the easy joke to get out of a horrible situation. But uh, I don't think Gilbert ever does that. I don't even know if he's even <laughs> built to do that. So he is kind of like, uh, you know, you are, you are the Ahab. You're going to find it well. <laughs> As I pointed out the other day, he's the only comic that's still doing funny Asian voices yes. <laughs> in his act. Some things need to be said. Yes. And, uh, no, I, I – do you well, – I'm sorry. I'm, I'm controlling that thing. Go no, ahead. I was just going to ask – well, Gilbert got on stage for the first time at 15, which we've talked about a lot on the show. Wow. At 15, I had no desire to be in show business at all. I wanted to be uh, like a helicopter pilot or, um, I don't know, something with uh, dirt bikes, and I be- thought. Be- before we forget. Because you mentioned Ahab. Yeah. What do you do in your sea world, man? <laughs> Good. I never, you well, know, Gregory Peck, never did Gregory Peck hated himself in that movie. He did? Yeah. Yeah, I've heard him. I don't know why. Mm, I don't know. I, I thought it was a fun movie. And Orson Welles turns up. Oh, yes. That one. As the preacher. You bet. And Richard Basehart. Uh, yes. And, and I love Gregory Peck in Boys from Brazil. 
Yes. That's a good great. One. That's a great. That's a that's a definitely on the Jew. Yeah. You know, uh, yes. Jew paranoid yes. Jew. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I love that one. And uh, what's QB seven? Do you remember that? Who's that guy in that? Oh, uh, oh, oh, Anthony uh, uh, Hopkins. Uh, uh, my favorite. My favorite. Uh, ben Gazzara. Ben, G- yes, yes. I, ben Gazzara yes. and Anthony Hopkins. I wonder, you know, because Ben Gazzara has like a a very like varied career. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like uh, from the Chinese bookie movie. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah, um, sure. To, and uh, Run for Your Life. To a couple of those kind of like Fantasy Island kind of TV movies yeah. that he did, you know. Um, I'm not sure. Was he in uh, Rosemary's Baby? No, I don't think so. Uh, no. No, he no, wasn't. He should no. have been. Yeah, but he. Uh, Cassavetes. You know, Cassavetes. Who, who worked with him a lot. Yeah. In Rosemary's Baby. Oh, he like- must have been like a great, fun guy to hang out with, like a good drinker and a party guy. Like he must have been like a classic, like 50s party guy. Let's, you know. Do some Benadryl and get drink and some he, scotch. And- he was also in a movie. I think he was in Convicts Four. That sounds right. Was yeah, it? with Sammy Davis Jr. and Rod Steiger. Sammy Davis. And what was that mm. guy? Tim Carey. What? What's that guy? Timothy, the- Timothy Carey. Timothy Carey was right. in that too. Right. right. Sammy Davis lost his eye in a car accident. I don't remember yeah. as oh, a kid. And, and it gets back to Jews. Yeah. <laughs> because I think the one who visited him was it Jeffrey Hunter or was it Wow Jeff Chandler maybe Wow oh, visited you got me there. him and and he put a star of David in his hand really and he was like in a coma or something and he was clutching Wow the star of David and then when he got out of the coma yeah. it was like you know in in his hand. Jeffrey Hunter was coolest. Jewish. What? Jeffrey Hunter was Jewish. Jeffrey Hunter had no idea. Uh, wow. Jeff Chandler. Well, Jeff Chandler. Jeff Chandler was oh, was a Jew. Wow. Jeff Hunter. Our research team is looking it up. Yes. On your porn <laughs> show, you should have had Jew on Jew action. I did. I had the Jews of porn. I was so stupid. I should have gotten you on that show. You should have. It's, I I don't know what happened. He knows the I, topic. I guess I guess you probably uh, looked at me and said. Hmm, no way, he's a yeah. That, that Bible thumper. Yeah, I, I, I really, uh, I really apologize about that because uh, yeah. you would have added a different take on the whole uh, porn thing. Now I assume that you've seen porn in theaters like Times Square, like you talked about seventies. The, uh, the first. Well, I know you're ladies here right now. The so first. The, blink, yes, blink your answer. Yes. <laughs> the first two all. porn mm-hmm. films I saw was a double feature. Go ahead. Uh, Deep, Throat Deep Throat and The Devil, Devil and Miss Jones. Yes. With and Georgina S. Belvin. And you yes. had her on the show. Yes, we had her on the show. She lived an amazing life, this woman. She was a copywriter. Uh, she, of course, went into it trying to be an actress, you know, like, uh, you know, she was a theatrical actress. And in the 70s, a lot of these 60s and 70s, the golden age of porn, a lot of these people, these, these, uh, Actors in the porn were basically, you know, like, like I guess you can call them like improvisational actors, street theater kind of people, something like that. And then, uh, you know, it it was like one of those things where it's like more rebellion and art than it was porn. And uh, I love those old movies, man. I love I, her. She was in her late thirties when she started doing porn. I was, I, I was kind of friends with uh, what's his name, Jamie, Jamie, oh, Jamie Gillis. Gillis. I love him. Jamie Gillis. Jewish. Jamie, yes, Jamie Gillis. We got into a long talk. Yeah. About he said that there were so many Jewish actors. He said the actresses would usually be Catholic. Yes. Uh, the the actors. There were a lot of like uh, Jews. Robert. Um, the star of a deep throat, um, Harry Reams. Harry, Harry Reams. He was a gone Jew, gone but not forgotten. He was a Jew. Yep. Harry Reams, of course, Ron Jeremy, Ron Jeremy, right. Paul Tom, Paul Thomas, yeah, PT. Um, let's see who else. Herschel Savage. Herschel yeah. Savage. You oh. had him on the show too. You did. Did, did you have him on the show? Yes, we yes. did. Not yeah, us. We did. No, Jews not us. Porn. <laughs> No, Herschel's, are, these guys are all great guys, but you're right. It was mostly Jewish guys and then, uh, like, these super hot Catholic girls. Yes. You know? Which is amazing. Oh, uh, Bridget no. loves Bernie, if you will. Oh, yes. <laughs> there you yes. go. With, <laughs> with, a reference. With, a, uh, with a Jew married yeah, but to with penetration. a lesbian. <laughs> <laughs> now, is that when you... Uh, it's interesting, because there was a lot of those kind of, like, couple comedies back then. Bridget yeah. loves Bernie. Um, never an, watch that one. You would never watch that no. one. That wasn't on long. And hey, remember when uh, David Bernie became Serpico? That's right. Wow. That's right. He was in the, the, the spinoff. Yeah. David Very Toma? Sh- no. oh, oh, Toma. Toma. Tony Macente. Very good. What was the whole point of Toma, that he could solve any crime with his kind of Italian looks? 
his <laughs> Italian. It's kind of we don't Jewish, have, we don't have the rights to Serpico, so we're yeah. going to make a Serpico knockoff. I love I, the movie Serpico. I when I first moved to Manhattan in the '80s, I was like, I'm going to, I want to like Serpico, man. I want to see that kind of. I love that that old New York. Oh. I thought I'd be like eating food on a on a uh, you know rooftop. Oh yes, with yes. a nurse. <laughs> now, speaking of Tony love- Macente. <laughs> Uh, were you a fan? I think, I think it was Musante. Musante. Yeah. Yes. Is that a wine or were, what is that? Yeah. You, oh, by the way, Robert Kerman, also another Jew. Yes. Born Debbie Does Dallas. We'll classic. come. We'll come back were, to Dave's. Were you book. a fan, as I was, of <laughs> Prince of the uh, Prince of Greenwich, uh, Pope of Greenwich? Yes. Yeah. Sure. Yes. I love it. Yeah. That was such a great movie. Uh, uh, Eric Roberts' greatest performance. Brooke Shields is in it, correct? No, no, no. no. Uh, oh. What's your name? The Mermaid. Uh, Daryl Hannah. Daryl yes. Hannah. Oh, I know what you're talking about. I thought you were talking about the gypsy in New York. Oh, oh, yeah. And, oh yeah. And Macente is holding his Eric Roberts' hand to the fence while another guy cuts Takes off his, his thumb. thumb. Right. They took my thumb, Charlie. <laughs> See, now that to me is 80s comedy right there. Yeah. Everybody did there. They took, what if they didn't take his thumb? What if they took his yeah, pinky? Yeah, it would yeah. sound a little bit like this. They <laughs> took my <laughs> pinky. <laughs> They push me. They push me hard. Because, you know, Frank, when I was starting comedy, uh, uh, I would play governors on Long Island besides mm-hmm. the open oh, mics yeah. in New You're York. You're a Long Islander like me. Yeah, and the Long Island comedy, it was a lot of impressions, a lot of, um, you know, uh, uh, karate kid, um, you know, wax on, wax yeah. off kind of jokes. <laughs> oh, yes. And I always wondered, Gilbert, how did you kind of develop into who you are with that kind of, uh, yeah, you know. I Yeah, I started off doing like, you did. You did. Like who? Who would you do? Uh, okay. I, I, I did. Give us like, a year so we'll know like yeah. for the impression. Go ahead. Well, see, that's it. So you're 15. The, so no. are you doing impressions? See, I, mine were, were, even back then, I was not contemporary. You were Because I would do like Boris Karloff oh, and yeah, Humphrey Bogart it. and Peter right. Laurie. Mm. And so. At 15. Uh, yeah. You were on so stage doing dated. Peter Laurie impressions. I was, uh, <laughs> I was a 15-year-old, totally dated. <laughs> 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 wow. Peter Laurie, what, what was he? Any was he German or a French? He uh, was a German, German Jew. Jew. Yeah, really. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Uh, Laszlo Lowenstein was wow. his name. And go. Give he us, came us. over here. Yeah. On the same boat with uh, with what's his name, the great German director Metropolis. Fritz Lang. Fritz Lang. Fritz yeah. Lang. Yeah. Give, give us a little Peter Laurie. Yeah. For, uh, this for, is a little for, bit for Dave and I. Yes. yes. Oh, okay. There was well, I, 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 my, one of my favorite lines of Peter Laurie. Well, oh well, in the Maltese Falcon. No, it's you who ruined it. You, it's your attempt to buy it. <laughs> Kevin, to found out how valuable it was. <laughs> you blundering fathead! <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. What I would like is when they would Fantastic. take like, somebody serious like yeah. that, and then he would be on another show, and then they'd be like, use him for funny. Oh, you know? yes. Oh, sure. Like, well, the, the Corman like, pictures used him for something. comedy. Yeah, Peter Lorre became, you know, sadly, like one of these, like, self-parodies. Oh, really? Yeah. You know a guy I also really love? Sal Mineo. Oh, yeah. Oh, I know oh, sure. this is jumping way ahead. Yeah. It's okay. Time. I loved him in the movie Exodus. You know, yes. He played like some kind of a boy prostitute. I, I don't know. <laughs> My parents never really no, explained it to me. No, in real life. Oh, okay. Came, came to a sad end. Yeah, horrible. Video. Yeah, he was just uh, beaten to death. Uh, horrible in Hollywood. In front yeah. of his house, yeah. I think. In a carport. So going back to Dave's old porn. Sure. You had Georgina Spelvin on the show. Our sure. friend Ron Jeremy. Mm-hmm. Seika. Yes. The great Nina Hartley. Yep. And uh, well, A Jew. Nina Hartley, really? Jewish. Ne- yep. Oh, I, up, I heard that. Yes, grew up in uh, uh, Berkeley, in Berkeley, in California, and uh, you know, like really cool parents. Did, did you super see smart that lady, deep? I, I didn't see that Deep Throat movie. You didn't see it? No. That's that, no the 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 uh, 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 Amanda Seyfried one. Oh no, I didn't see oh, it. But I love her. She's yeah. so yeah. hot. Amanda so Seyfried, hot. though, is so much more attractive than Linda Lovelace was. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, Linda Lovelace, she was a uh, you know, whatever. She never did it for me. Seika does it for me every time. Oh yeah. Like I, I know Seika. She is like a super cool, smart, intelligent lady. But I love her porn. I like. I watch it all the time. Couldn't and get Stacey Donovan on the show, huh? You know, if it went further, I would love she to She became do it. a whistleblower against, oh, the oh, porn, right. against the porn industry. Oh, and I had heard this. Turncoat. Yeah. I had heard that Tracy Lord, yes. when they were destroying her films and getting rid of them because she was underage, 
Someone said, and I don't know if this is true, they said they think Tracy Lords is the one who turned them in so that she could, uh, her movies would make more money. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. Maybe. I know that that did create... Jew. Tracy Lords. Jew. She? Yes. Wow. Hot-looking Jew, too. She was a hot-looking <laughs> wow. porn actress. I'm going to have to look at the I, porn again. I'm going to have to watch it with my canter. I was in... So Jewish. I was in... <laughs> <laughs> a terrible, a terrible reality show where we spend a night in an abandoned, insane asylum. What is it called? And, well, Comic strip? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Comic strip live. <laughs> and one of the other celebs was Tracy Lords. Mm -hmm. And at one point, we're She's all around a, a, a candle to get in touch with the spirit of this serial killer mm -hmm. who roams the place. And, and Tracy Lords actually has to say... Because she has to be the host to the host, you know, like like how in um, Ghost, like he enters oh, I Whoopi see. Goldberg's right, right, body. Right, right, And so she, he has to, so Tracy Lords is going, please come in me. Please come <laughs> in me. <laughs> and, and she did it very well rehearsed. <laughs> she had a little legitimate movie career for five minutes. Oh, yes. She was in uh, John Waters. used her and, in Cry and, Baby. And she was on uh, Married with Children. Right, she right. popped up. Uh, wait, who's the... Uh, you know Carol Connor, right? Sure. She, her daughter... Yes, from... Is... From... Uh, from all the family. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can you guys explain it to me? There was like a wave of guys with like girly names. Like Carol, Stacy mm. Keach. Oh, interesting. You know, and uh, yes. what was that about? Leslie Nielsen. Leslie There's another Nielsen. one. Very good. <laughs> yes. There was like a lot of like men, but with girl names. And I guess that was something. Was it that their parents, like they didn't want them or they wanted a girl or something? <laughs> I don't get it. That's interesting. But, yeah. Uh, Oh, so uh, more about comedy? Yes. Yeah, so I, I did comedy for like seven years in the open mics, and uh, I used to watch Colin Quinn a lot and, uh, you know, Alan Havey and all those guys. But I was never really uh, good at it, like right away. But I did it every night. I had a regular job and all that kind of stuff. But I must have run into Gilbert or had seen him at Catch Rising Star like a couple of times. And, uh, you know, he was already like a legend. I mean, this is like, you know the end of the 80s, beginning of the mm -hmm. 90s. And I would say that, um, you know, were you doing that up all night show at that point? Uh, yeah. You, know, with Elvira? I, I would, you were doing that in the yeah. 80s? It was yeah. up yeah. all night? Yeah. 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 yeah, I was doing it with, um, uh, on Saturday, I'd be on, on Sunday, on, yeah, on Friday, uh, Ron DeShear was on. Ron DeShear. Yeah. There you go. I've heard you say you weren't the funny guy in school, Dave, that you really weren't a born performer. No, I'm not. Hey, if, if it makes funny. you feel any better, I don't think you're the funny guy. See, there you go. <laughs> Finally, an honest opinion. <laughs> Finally. No, I, 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 I had a great sense of humor, yeah. and uh, but, uh, but I wouldn't call myself the class clown or anything like that. When, whenever people ask me about class clown, yeah. I always think that the class clowns are the ones who grew up to be the funniest guy at their job. Yeah, that's true. Like an uh, insurance or something yeah. like that. I understand that. But uh, I, I don't see you um, – I, I see you as an aloof loner in your school, right? Yeah, I was Maybe, James uh, Dean. I could see you like, – <laughs> <laughs> You were, huh? Yeah. I James could see Dean. you uh, talking and crying to a Wolfman poster. <laughs> Pretty Wolf much. Wolfman. Yep. Look the I've got right a here. Frankenstein. Yeah. Frankenstein. Look no farther. But I, Jewish. But I, oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see. Peter Laurie was a Jew. I want to see other Jews in horror. Uh, oh, um, there was one Jewish Dracula. Who? That was Francis Lederer, who really? starred in the movie Return of Dracula. And what years are we talking about? In the 30s? That must have been like about the 50s. Oh, okay. Return of That's Dracula. That's all right. That's a good time to be Jewish. <laughs> Did not know there was a Jewish Dracula. Oh, but what I was saying is, is uh, Lang. Uh, Fritz Lang. Fritz Lang and Peter Lorre were on the same boat coming yeah. to America. Really? Yeah. With, wow. with And not the movie with Eddie Murphy <laughs> and Arsenio Hall. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a great movie when you look back on it. You know, they really, uh, they really caught the whole immigration thing. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. Now, let me ask you about Jerry Lewis. Yes. Now, did you uh, work with him at all, ever? 
never actually worked with him. I was I performed at his at his roast and right. stuff like that. Never never worked with him because I. Loved his movies growing up. I did too. All of the Major. Patsy, which is one of his lesser known movies, the Patsy. Oh right? yes, yes, great movie. That that was where he was. He becomes a star. They train him to be a comic. And Peter Laurie is in That's it. That's right. And John Carradine. Oh, there you go. And Hans Conried. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, that and and it's so funny. And the Patsy is a movie that shows how they take this nobody right. and, and they make him into a star. Yeah. I love that movie. Yeah, very I, funny. I also like the, um, you know, the one that's shot all in black and white. It's kind of his, like, uh, uh, you know. The uh, Belt Boy? Yeah, The Belt. I love that movie. Great, great I movie. I love that movie. And uh, the cool thing about it is that he, he even said it himself where he plays himself as a star and how people react to him. You know, like where everybody's trying to light a cigarette and all that kind of stuff. I love that. Oh, yeah. I love it. And I, you know, who doesn't like uh, uh, the... Uh, the, Nutty the Nutty Professor. The Nutty Professor is a classic. Great, great. Who was the girl on that? She was definitely uh, not Jew. Stella, oh, Stella Stevens. Stevens. Totally not hot. Not a Jew. Not a Jew at all. <laughs> not at all. And Stella Stevens in uh, Poseidon Adventure. That's right. She, oh. she goes, she climbs and jumps and gets wet in her white underwear. Wow. Through the whole movie. Good to know. Great, great. S- stayed with you, huh? Yeah. Also- <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> That's one of Ernest Borgnine's... Like, he must have been, like, in his 50s at that point. Oh, yeah. Probably. He, he was a great... He was the, the best. He really was. And Red Buttons. Like, was, what was Ernest Borgnine? He was, like, part bulldog, part just amazing. Yes. I mean, he just, like, always looks the same, but he's always... Even as a young boy, I believe he looked like that. Oh, yeah. Do you know he was married to Ethel Merman, briefly, Ernest Borgnine? Really? Which, which picturing the sex there is pretty I think, crazy. I think our pal Drew Friedman has a cartoon of, <laughs> of, of the two of them copulating. <laughs> but if we did uh, talk about Shelley Winters for just a quick second. Yeah. Um, first of all, <laughs> I never saw Toadie Fields, but I assume they were in the kind of same body yeah, type. Yeah, yeah. Do you know Toadie? Yeah, Toadie, Toadie's the one who lost her leg. Yes, yeah. that's... Yeah. Did you ever work with Toadie? Suppose, no, never worked with time. Toadie, yeah. She supposedly was an amazing joke writer yeah. and performer, so I think that we should not only look at the missing leg, but yeah. also the, the act. <laughs> and um, I'll throw all of them out there. I'll put... Uh, Phyllis Diller and Joan Rivers up there as like great joke people. I love watching them on the old Carsons. I like that. I used to watch. Oh, oh yeah. Dead. And uh, you know, uh, did, you did Johnny Carson, right? Never did. You Carson. didn't. Never. Wow. You, did yeah. you ever do the show regrets? with a different host with Leno host? Uh, no, no, never did the Tonight Show back then. Right, right. Is that on your list of regrets besides that shirt you're wearing? <laughs> I know this is not a visual podcast. Like I said, I'm not the funniest guy. I'm going for an easy laugh. I was watching like really great comics like Schimmel and um, oh Robert Schimmel, we love Schimmel him. and uh, who, by the way, I think is one of the most underrated comics ever. Schimmel, one of my favorites, and uh, uh, Richard Jenny, both uh, who are no longer with us, were great joke people and like bits and you know huge chunks and when you watch them you'd see like how much material you can pull out of one topic and i i thought that was really important for me especially as a kind of boring white guy on stage you know there's a million white guys up there so it's good. gilbert I, gilbert I, and i met when we were i was working for rich jenny oh that's I was right. him too yeah well you wrote for a caroline's, caroline's comedy, comedy i was i was on the staff the I, season after you i i remember okay. being out of town that's when we met and i was in a mall and in the mall was some radio station that I wasn't booked. I was just walking past. And I see this really <clears throat> young girl, very cute looking young girl, playing with her puppy yeah. on the floor. And at first I thought, oh, she's kind of hot looking. And I shouldn't be looking at her mm-hmm. because this girl's obviously, you know, total underage. jailbait, right. or totally underage. And so I look and then I look away and I'm walking away. And she goes, oh, wait. I think you know my boyfriend. Really? And and I said, uh, I said, uh, who's your boyfriend? She goes, uh, Robert Schimmel. Wow. <laughs> I thought you were going to say Richard Jenny for yeah. sure. Wow. <laughs> so how old was she, you think? Uh, 12. But how old was the puppy? Because <laughs> if you combine the two ages. <laughs> That's a great story, man. That was in a mall? Somewhere? Yeah. Mm. Richard had a few young girlfriends himself. Oh, yeah. Jenny, over the years. Well, you know. Do you remember when we met working on that sketch? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes, where I was Robert Gilbert, Redford. Gilbert came on the show and was Robert Redford in a <laughs> indecent proposal parody <laughs> when Rich was hosting. Bobby Redford, uh, The Sting. 
Oh, yeah. Of Hated the stink. Yeah, really? Like Hated the How about stink. Paul Newman? Do you like him? I like Paul Newman. I, Jewish. Yes. Oh, yes. yes. And he was married to that Jewish. woman. Who is she? Who is she? Joanne uh, Woodward. Joanne Woodward, yeah. yeah. They were like one of Hollywood's most successful couples. Um, I like Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Love Kid. Love it. Didn't like the stink. That's interesting. I, and the oh. Hustler. Why did you movie? not like the stink? Because you've lived through a con in the Depression. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's his name? Was in it? The guy from Jaws. Oh, uh, Shaw. Robert Shaw. Robert yes. Shaw. Yes. Yeah. Great. Gil- Gilbert's mad because he was up for the Ray Walston part. Yeah. He didn't get it. <laughs> oh, my God. You know, can we just jump over to Jaws for a second? That is one of the best movies ever made. Yes. I have to tell you. Uh, who is the guy who played the cop again? The, uh, Roy Scheider. Uh, Roy Scheider. My favorite, a Jew. And I loved him. No, in- he wasn't a Jew. He's not? He was a oh, German. Oh, no. German. Really? Oh, yeah, I get it now. Uh, he, Richard Dreyfus, of course. Well, Jew. yeah, he's like two yeah. Jews. Yeah, he's, he's like a Jew, he's, whatever, sampling he's of Jews. Two, two, two Jews in one. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, what's his name? Uh Scheidner was in, uh, what's it, Scheider or Scheider? Scheider. Scheider. The he Apprenticeship was in, was of Duddy Kravitz. Duddy Kravitz, yes. a great That's movie. That's a good one. Yeah. He with, really, with Jack Warden. Jack Warden. And and I think, was Joseph Weissman also I in think that? he is. Wow. I think he is. Now, that's not a date movie. Now, is it the Joseph, Apprenticeship of Joseph, Duddy Kravitz? <laughs> Joseph Weissman, Big makeout I film. think, would be in the category of only Jewish Bond villain. Who? He was Dr. No. He was Dr. No. Wow. Let's see. I have to get back to you on that one. That's and crazy. But there are two Jewish Bond girls. Who? Uh, Barbara Bach, who's married to Ringo. Yes. She's Jewish? Uh, yeah. Wow. And, and Jane Seymour. Oh, I love her. Yeah. Two Jews. I she's English. Yeah. Well, you could be an English Jew. Gert Frobe they wasn't have- Jewish? <laughs> <laughs> Goldfinger? <Hey. laughs> They what? Wait, Jews what about Shai? He was in Seven Ups, right? The Seven Ups, yep. Seven Ups, yep. and then he was in what's his Marathon name? Man. Marathon That's Man, great, 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 movie. great, great. But what's the other one. movie? Uh, you know, Picking the Toes in Poughkeepsie. You know, what I'm talking about. Oh, uh, the French Connection. I love those movies. That's right. I love it. That made me want to go to France or do heroin, but not both. Oh, well, was that was such French a great Connection movie. too. That was yeah. That's when they got him hooked. Yeah. I love that movie. Ah, uh, that was such a good. That's old New York too. That's like oh, the yeah. interesting thing about Jaws is that Robert Shaw was the replacement actor. We talked about that in the cab the other day. Who was uh, the first guy? They, Dabney they, Coleman, Sterling, yeah, Stur- yeah, Sterling Hayden Sterling from The Godfather, yeah. who played oh, the, wow. who played McCluskey, the cop, the crooked cop in The Godfather, wow. was cast as Quint. But the studio, he was a wild man. Yeah, the studio wouldn't insure him. And and they were considering for a short time Charlton Heston. But they thought no he might way. take away from. No, they were considering him for the sheriff. Interesting. But that would take away because you'd say, well, of course, Charlton Heston can beat up a shark. You know, it's like. Yeah, I think he was uh, still recovering from doing El Cid. Oh, yeah. It's a great movie. <laughs> I'm. I really learned a lot about uh, Spain and the Moors. <laughs> then I believe. Oh, and some... Soylent Green. Oh, oh yeah, it's a, a great, great one. one with some amazing, very soft core. Edward uh, G. There. Robinson. Yes. Jew. No way. Yes. yes very much so. Oh wow, James Cagney. No, no uh, Irish. No. Orphan. But he could speak Yiddish, James really? Cagney. Mm. Um, Edward G. Robinson was something like Edward Rosenberg or something. Oh boy, big liberal. Yeah. Yes. G. Robinson, big, oh, really, yes. big lefty. Yes. Like a Reds. Like Reds yeah, yeah, red. yeah. Okay. He, he, I think he sold Secrets of the Adam. He Bob. did. <laughs> he was Ethel Rosenberg's uh, babysitter. Dave, let's talk a little bit about Insomniac, mm-hmm. just for listeners. Humphrey Bogart and- was married to a Jew. There you go. Yeah, but he, he, must was. Have been, he must have had that old school kind of like Jews. I don't know. I could take him or leave him. Yeah. <laughs> He has that look. How, how, how did insomnia? Ah, Jews, I could take them or leave them. <laughs> sometimes I like the Jews, and sometimes I think they should be wiped off the planet. But uh, she's a hot-looking Jew, so, so I think I'll take it. <laughs> What's that movie where he's wearing a bow tie? He looks like a dope. But oh, he's cool. Oh, he. Uh, Is that the, um, the sports reporter? Yes, the heart yes. The heart with Rod Steiger he was right. and so Nehemiah Pisa, uh, yeah. Nehemiah Persoff. Oh, is that a was that a vitamin? Is that, is that a name? It's <laughs> a character actor. <laughs> okay, so the insomnic thing. Yeah, I, tell us a little bit about. I, it. I, 
I, I just wanted to do a show because I'm not a good actor where, um, you know, it was like kind of like the comics after the show go out drinking and then we had the element of like third shift people working late. And, um, you know, it was kind of good because it's like a travel show, but it's also kind of a drinking show. And, um, you know, that seems to be the one credit that people like, you know, really dig. A lot of people keep coming up to me like, they're like I was a little kid, and, you know, my parents wouldn't let me watch it, but we'd sneak down and watch that show. So that's like the credit that people like seem to really, uh, you know, get of my well, you were funny career. on that show yeah no it was it was all unscripted and the guys who helped me make it uh, i can say their names dave hamilton and uh uh i'm sorry oh, oh shit oh excuse me um Oh, yeah, oh, don't you, watch your language on this show. Are you allowed yeah. to curse? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. The guys who the guy, don't say cunt. Uh, <laughs> please. Uh, the guys, the guys who made uh, the producers and all the people who worked on the show were super cool, and like we were out there like for nights and nights and nights, all night long, and it was a lot of work. And uh, you know, all I can say is that uh, it was a great show for its time. I don't think. At this point, you know, people go, like, you got to do that show. It's like, I'm too old. My kidney's kicked out. I'm like, just like, you know, uh, I'm an old man, so I can't do the show. But, uh, you know, I, I, I like how people like like the show. But it kind of like, it's hard to be a stand-up comic because I really want to be a stand-up comic. And then, like, if a TV credit is kind of bigger than your act, then you kind of have Of course. Have to, so, but, like, you know, I, I can't thank the people enough for watching it, I guess. And I remember I remember the Vegas episode, for some reason, comes yes. to mind with you and Pat Morita and Charo. Pat Oh, Pat Morita, God bless his soul. Yeah. Great guy. And Robin Leach was fucking with you. In, yeah, Robin in, in Leach. What was that alive? about? Uh, yeah. He was, um, you know, I have a feeling he's like one of those guys, because they all lived in Vegas, so we lucked right. out. We got them all there. But, uh, yeah, I, I have a feeling that he he thought we were going to make fun of him, so he kind of, like, jumped the gun and kind of gave me a little bit of business. But can I say one thing about Charo? Awesome. Showed up ready to work. Her son was there. I believe her son was like her manager or publicist at that point. It just showed up ready to go. And I love it. Great. And Charo's still fuckable. I believe so. Yeah. And, you know, Pat, who, uh, by the way, you know, people know him from the Karate Kid thing. But, uh, you know, he also, I think, moved to Vegas and said kind of like, you know, I'm going to, you know, he was stand-up comic. So oh, he was yeah. like, I think, the original Asian comic. Yeah, I think they called I think him. he opened for Marco Polo, I believe, in China. <laughs> Oh, oh, <laughs> he used to call himself, pre-political correctness, the hip nip. That's yes. correct. Yeah. That's correct. That's cool. And then you did. And he was, wait, he was, he was uh, a Japanese soldier who, uh, who wouldn't give up right. in a flashback episode of The Odd Couple. Oh, that's a great one. Yes. yes. <laughs> they told me I'd be making love to Betty Grable on the White House lawn by Christmas. <laughs> that was a great show because that was another... One. Guys living together, what's going yes, on show. Yes. Yeah. Now, Juskow knows that show way better than me. He does. But uh, uh, Klugman and Felix, like, we, we both would always have a couple of laughs, which is like, uh, you know, the fact that they, um, like, it shows you how time changes. Like, when they relax, they're still kind of wearing suits. Oh, yes. You ever see yes. that? Like, I always find that funny that they're still kind of, like, dressed up, like, for today's times. Well, it's, remember that, those... There was no, like, play clothes for adults back do, then. Do you remember those horrible later Bob Hope movies like I'll take Sweden. Oh sure. And boy, did I get the wrong right, number right, and yes. cancel my reservation. The one Phyllis, Phyllis Diller would show oh, up. Oh yes. Yeah. yeah. And he would always have one of those ugly '60s suits on, uh, and who are you he'd wear about? a hat. Bob Hope. Bob, Bob Hope. Hope. I love the Bob Hope movies. The later, those later ones. And I'm going to so say right now, I think Bing Crosby got sold down the river with his that kid, his kids saying he yeah. uh, whatever. I believe. I assume at that point, every kid was beaten or whatever but it was. Bing Crosby. Yes. Um, not a Jew. Not oh, I, I no, heard. No. I heard both Bob Hope and Bing Crosby hated the Jews. <laughs> That's what I heard. Wait, can but, we go back to the insomniac for one second? Wait, yeah. wait. So <laughs> the guys on the show, Nick McKinney and Dave Hamilton, they were the producers, and there was all these other great guys. And we would go out, and like the the two episodes that people always bring up are the Nutria Hunt in New Orleans, which is where we hunt these rat kind of things, and then. Um, Oh, we did this thing in Japan we, when we did the foreign episodes, which is uh, this penis party with these giant penises. I remember that one. So those were like the two things and that people Amsterdam, always... And the Amsterdam, when you spun the Wheel of yes, Sin. Yes, the Wheel of Sin, which has episode. been done many a time since then. So big tip of the hat to all the people who made the show and the people who watch it. So thank you. Go ahead. Buddy Hackett. <laughs> Buddy <laughs> he Hackett. He doesn't want to talk about you at all, Dave. Buddy no, Hackett. One time said of Bing Crosby, he said, you want to know... Why Bing Crosby beat his kids? Because Bing Crosby couldn't get a hard on. Really? <laughs> yeah. 
Freddie Hackett was blue. Good wasn't trivia. He? He's a blue guy. <laughs> we should wrap. Do you remember that joke that he had, which is like he's in World War II or whatever? Yeah. He's in World War II and he's uh, having sex with a prostitute. And she's like banging. For- Did yeah. you tell me this? Oh, no, wait. Okay. She's banging. She's going back and forth. And he goes, are you liking it? And she's like, uh, no, uh, you got my scar. Uh, your tie's caught in my vagina or something. Like, <laughs> it's some kind of weird thing. Of- she's going back and forth. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Caught in my vagina. <laughs> That must have been really hard. Because, you know, George Burns, who I was not a very big fan of uh, comedically, yeah. you know, but I, I heard Gracie really carried more than her weight in that relationship, correct or no? Yeah, not a Jew, Gracie. No, not at all. Yeah, George Burns was a Jew. Nat Birnbaum. Yeah. yeah. Nat Birnbaum. He looks better older than he did as a boy. Yes, yeah. yes. That sucks. Oh, I wonder if that's going to happen to me. Will my looks kick in at 70? <laughs> I hope not. I don't think we're going to make it. You'll turn into <laughs> Brad Pitt. <laughs> you got anything coming up, Dave, that you want to plug or talk about? Um, DaveAttell.com. Well, uh, yeah, you know what? I, I'd like to say this. Uh, you know, we do these comedy underground live shows, and uh, we do them at the Village Underground here in the city and in L.A. at the Comedy Store. And they are a lot of fun. You know, even though that show, uh, uh, we did it for Comedy Central, and uh, they did not – Give us a yes or no on a new season, which I assume means it's not going to happen. It's still fun to do live. And Gilbert is like such a great. He's I just love watching him. I'm going to say it. Um, blowing away today's millennial crowd with his um, references. His Ted Bessel references. His Ted Bessel. <laughs> <laughs> his Georgie Jessels. <laughs> his Reagan. My Elijah uh, Cook Jr. <laughs> imitation. <laughs> These young, these young, I call them Trader Joes, they don't really get what he's talking about. What oh, do you think of the young crowds nowadays? Oh, these kids. These kids. Kids? Today. What you gonna do with these kids? <laughs> so, Why can't they be like we were? Perfect in every way. What is wrong with these kids today? Who's saying that? Paul Lynn. Thank well, you. Oh, Paul Lynn. Bye bye, bye birdies. Why can't they dance like we did? What's wrong with Sammy K? What's the matter with kids? Just, We're going to wrap it up. But do you still do those bits of the act? I'm curious. Oh, absolutely. Do you, do you still do the Ben Gazzara extraterrestrial? I know Ben Gazzara. I, he's dead. I kind of. Right. And I'm doing other dead people in the act. <laughs> Let me. You know a lot about comedy and everything. What no. about Danny Kay? What? 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 what was oh, that's story? a whole other show. Oh, Dave. Danny Kay. Too much. Okay. Well, that's a whole yeah, other show. I, we could fit this in. <laughs> <laughs> we'll One cut, time, we'll cut somewhere no, else. What was, was he a comedian? Was he uh, a musician? He was song and dance, song and dance man. And so who would he be in today's times? Like a Will I Am or something? Yeah, yeah just, like, just exactly okay. like he that. Would, I already uh, had a sad life. Like he was a sad guy. He was a, a he was an angry guy. Angry. Yeah. Now I okay. Here's the story I heard. Okay. As I heard it. That Orson, and uh, not Orson Welles. It's not Orson uh, Welles. No, it no. Can't be, yeah. Lawrence Olivier sure. and Danny Kay used to blow each other, basically. <laughs> can't believe and, you don't know this stuff, Dave. <laughs> a veteran of show and, business and, like and, yourself. And I, and I think <laughs> before, before Danny Kay would stick his dick <laughs> in Olivier's asshole, <laughs> this is sacrilege. Go, is it safe? <laughs> There you go. There's your marathon. You better you tear that. up your SAG card because you're out of it. when Lawrence Olivier <laughs> was jerking off Danny yeah. Kay, he would sing, Oh, Thumbelina, Thumbelina, <laughs> tiny little thing. Thumbelina, sing that dance. Thumbelina, sing. Oh, what's the difference? Thumbelina. Wait, Danny Kay was Dutch, right? Was there I don't something think like so. He was a Jew. Jewish guy was from he? Brooklyn. Yes. Oh, there you go. A G- I think his name was Dan- Danielish Jewovich. Jen- now, Jen- now, so one day, uh, Lawrence Olivier <laughs> was flying into some some airport, right? And Danny Kay uh, disguised himself in one of his outfits with a nose, right? He was a master of disguise, and, wig, uh-huh. and, of and disguise. he said, you know, like in a French accent, <laughs> you know, I am uh, the uh, security. I want you to take all of your clothes off. And Olivier he is highly offended, but he takes all of his clothes off, and then Danny Kay starts sticking his finger <laughs> in Olivier's asshole. 
Wow. And, yeah. and, and then they both had a big laugh. And then, <laughs> then they, they both fucked each other in the ass. After. Malcolm McDowell told the same story on the Joy Behar yeah. show. I love great, Malcolm McDowell. It's a great you story. See, wow. But when Malcolm McDowell told it, if. he said <laughs> Olivier was sticking his finger in Danny Kazer. Ah, yes. So I, you, you I would like it. to think that both of them equally stuck their finger in each other's asshole because in a in a relationship <laughs> yes. both parties should be equal. oh absolutely and i think they should both what about peter o'toole what i mean like he was a favorite of mine you're not gonna crush him now Danny are you? <laughs> fish fucked peter o'toole. i doubt it during the making of Lawrence of Arabia, during my favorite Danny year, Danny K was fish fucking <laughs> Peter D- Danny Danny K, not a nice guy, apparently. Not no. Uh, George no, Carlin used he had to tell shit all over his fish. <laughs> Never mind, I can't get I, to it. Who, who do you think would win in a fight? Uh, Danny K versus Dick Danny Van Dyke. Danny K would win because <laughs> there's shit on his fish. When he was punching someone, <laughs> would knock them out. Wow. Incredible. I can't believe it. <laughs> Aren't you glad you asked about Danny I Kay? know. I didn't know. I didn't know what to say. I thought he was going to have a nice remembrance. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We're going to wrap it up, but I want you... When he, when he was fisting a guy, would he go, I'm Hans Christian. <laughs> I'm just in my foam butter. Wow. That joke needs a little timing. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Fist Christian Anderson. <laughs> We'd have to get Malcolm McDowell on the show. I yes. love to him. To confirm that. Please do it. We will try to get him. Where, how did he get a hold of that guy? I He hosted well, that that horrible uh, misbegotten season of Saturday Night Live that I was on. Malcolm McDowell? Yes. Oh, yes. yes. Oh, yes. That was a scary time you, period. You both had scary experiences. Yes, at and, SNL. And, yeah. and we fingered each other in you the You did? End. Yes. Yes. I knew that elevator yeah. smelled fun. <laughs> so you're plugging Comedy Underground with Dave Attell, which yeah, is coming gonna... back for another season. No, no, I don't think it's going to. I think we're just going to do it live, and then uh, okay. people could just go to my site, DaveAttell.com. And they could see all my dates and all that kind of stuff. But, uh, you know, I'm a road guy, so I'll be out on the road. And um, always, always glad to talk to you, Gilbert. And please come back to the Comedy Underground show. You're always invited. I heard. Go ahead. (laughs) When Danny came fucking (laughs) Olivier, Olivier kept hitting his head against the wall. And and Buddy Hawkins said that Olivier said... (laughs) Your tie is stuck <laughs> in my ear hole. <laughs> Your scarf. Remember, he's an English actor. Your scarf Your is stuck in my... <laughs> oh, incredible. Well, wow. thanks for doing okay, the show. Thanks. I love, I, I love what you guys do. Keep doing it, please. Thank you, buddy. Thanks for being so a part I'm, of this. I'm guys. Gilbert Gottfried. This has been Gilbert Gottfried's <laughs> Amazing Colossal Podcast with my co-host, Frank Santo Padre. We've been talking about Danny Kay and Lawrence Olivier. And Georgina Spelvin. Yes, and Georgina <laughs> Spelvin all getting in in the asshole. <laughs> and and I and uh, and our guest was uh, David Tell. Thanks, Gilbert, Dave. you were horrific. <laughs> You're horrible. <laughs> that I do. <laughs>